What if I've told you by 2030, around 300 million jobs are going to be replaced by AI worldwide? Last week, Elon Musk had a conversation with the UK Prime Minister. And they were discussing about AI, the future of AI and robotics. And what are the things that we can do to, to avoid any dangers, you know? And I remember this conversation that Elon Musk had uh, with the UK Prime Minister. And then he said, at the minute, even if you buy a Tesla, it's not going to chase you up in the building. However, a humanoid robot can. And we can't really just leave it to the software to eliminate eliminate that process. Because imagine the possibility, imagine... I think of the the Terminator of the movie when I'm when I'm talking about this. Um, but it's so funny. But imagine the possibility of the robot taking over his its own network, because that's all it is. It's a program. It's a it's a software that is running on the back end. You know. And they said we need to have some sort of referee, an off switch, a manual off switch. And at the meaning, I think at the minute I think this is the best the best that we can do. And what this means for the jobs, you know, what what kind of jobs are going to be replaced? And I think the, then they said we'll come to a point that when no jobs are needed at all because AI will do everything for you. And that should scare you. That should scare you right now, knowing 2030. Because since you know this information now, you need to take action. You need to adapt and and if you have a business, you need to pivot. You need to use AI to your advantage, which a lot of businesses have started using uh, ChatGPT, for example, which is an open source. And everybody can benefit from that, build a better service for the business, I guess. I know for, for, from an example of that, a lot of marketing agencies I know they using ChatGPT to create bots for the customer service instead of having a customer service, a human behind a desk. They have a chatbot which they've given them a specific task to answer a specific specific questions. From most uh, most common questions, they refer you to a place or to a site. And they even have the human interaction based on how you train the chatbot. Which is, I guess, it's nice to have. But it's also it's also scary because if I'm talking to a, to a chatbot, then, and I don't know, and I, at the same time, I think I'll talk to a real human. I don't know, it's, it's just not really convenient. And I think if the customer would know that, I don't think they will appreciate it, but I think they would appreciate the the amount of time they can get the information. So there's two ways, I guess, into this thing. BlackRock. BlackRock is using an AI that's called Aladdin. And they have been using that AI for over 20 years. But what they've said now, they said, well, we're going to train this AI and use that AI to predict the future predict the future of our, how our economic uh, world is going. And if you can predict your economy based on AI, that's kind of scary because now you can sort of influence and control the world. And what they also said um, with the World Forum, with the World Economic Forum, they said that we want to build the 15-minute uh, smart cities. And I think I've, I've seen a conversation with the UK Prime Minister having the same discussions. Now, I'm not sure whether that we will have those or not. But imagine, this reminds me of, of another movie, The Hunger, Hunger Games. In this, in this movie, there's blocks, literally blocks. Different areas, different blocks. And in, in my mind, it's like blocks for for the poor for the poor people and blocks for the rich people. And you have you need to have some sort of um, access ID to go from one place to another. 
Take China, for example. China, real time right now. You go into a grocery store and there's no people to serve you. There's no customer service. You scan your ID or they have, they even have facial recognition uh, machines before you walk in. You buy whatever you buy and then you you pay and then you go. And they also have another scary thing is they have the a digital print where say you commit a crime, they can recognize your patterns even if they don't even if the camera doesn't see your face. Can recognize your patterns on how you walk, you know, even the things that you eat or the things that they get delivered to you. You just a digitalized number and they can control you based on that. This is this is this is real stuff. This is happening right now, not 2013, not in some sort of fiction movie or whatever. And yeah, imagine those 15 minute cities. Imagine those things. Imagine the things that they can do like government and apply those things if if that ever happens. You need to be so rich to be able to be in that level on the other side, I mean. Because I wouldn't want to be in the on the poor side, like treating you like because everything everything I think of is I think of the same like as the movies. Because what we see in the movies is becoming reality day after day. So you need to be on the other side, and that's what we're here for. <laughs> ah. The UK Prime Minister said they're going to use the AI on the government site, which is the gov.uk, and the, in a way that it can help people, and because you can do all sorts of things in the government sites, uh, from applying to a driver license to, I don't know, um, establishing your business online and all that, registering your business. And what this means for businesses, you know, we've seen like Facebook, for example, uh, not Facebook, sorry, YouTube, for example, you see so many faceless YouTube channels, they make a lot of money and they've used the opportunity when ChatGPT was really hot. And all they do, they take a script, they ask ChatGPT to write them a script that's how it works. And say, for example, give me the top five laptops for 2023 with the best aspects, hardware aspects, whatever, for students. Because now we have an ideal audience that we can uh, sell that for. And then all you do is just hire a, or you either create the video or do the video yourself or uh, hire a contractor on Fiverr, create the video and then just upload that on YouTube and have the affiliate links on the description below. And when someone is searching for on that um, on YouTube or even Google because it gets ranked, they buy and then you get a commission. Now, do I recommend that business model? I wouldn't really because... It, it has become very saturated. And it, I mean, it's no brain. No one, no one wants to leave money on the table and everybody, once they see an opportunity, they jump into the opportunity. That makes sense. Um, I'm, and I think the best, mid, uh, the best business model, the best niche, I guess, is, is you. What do I mean by this? You are the niche. It doesn't matter whether that is this podcast. It doesn't matter whether you want to create, I don't know, skate, skating uh, videos. But the niche is you. You need to, you are the main character. And my aim for this channel as well is to to create and build a relationship as if you were sat right next to me and have a, uh, have a chat. This is, this is what I'm aiming for. I know I'm very into very early into into this but this is the end goal you know have you seen this video that's gone viral there's an ai video just like a car that is on fire and there's a crane ball that's swinging back and forth 
and you can literally see how realistic this video is because it's just everything, the graphics from from the motions and everything. And I think Elon Musk is creating another software where you can imitate other people's faces and other people's voices. And you can pay to use that software, I think. How crazy is this? Imagine, and, and, and that's, that's also very scary because imagine using that on the TV. Imagine using this to passing down a narrative. And you see, you may see a real face, but it's not really a real face. It's just an AI a script that is running on the back end on the software. And how can you trust AI nowadays? Because this is the thing, especially nowadays, that all the attention has gone from the TV and from radios to podcast and YouTube and Twitter, social media in general. You know, you need to be more and more um, careful on what to believe and who to pay attention to and be influenced by. You see those verification uh, bots when you say you want to submit a request or get someone's email and then you have to click the images with the crossways. Uh, if there's AIs that you can pass through that process because that was the initial, that's, that's, why it, it, that's why it was created because there were a lot of bots not just spamming people on emails and then they had to come with a with a way and now there's like you can even do that how crazy is this you know I think I'll just leave you with one question for the day now that you know this information and you you can literally get on YouTube or, or Google and search for anything if you had to change yourself and if you had to build a future, what would it take? No excuses. What would it take for you to build a future in five, ten years from now?